Let's make an assembly. So we'll close window, make a new assembly, give it a name, and it's going to be the uh, the double slider crank thing. So let's call it two slide. first component that we're going to add, add the, with the new component icon, is going to be the shuttle. Whoops! Not the shuttle. Cancel. First component we're going to add is the base. And we're going to assemble it by default. This button here, assemble the component. Here, watch the tip, the tooltip. Assemble the component in the default location, which will be just fine for us. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is bring in uh, the shuttle. So, let's bring in a shuttle and uh, the component placement dialog as well. I'm going to turn on the datum planes. Now, in this case, we're going to add not a placement constraint, but a connection. And the connection that we're going to use is going to be a slider. No, it's going to be a planer where we can select the middle face or plane of the shuttle as well as the center of the groove. Notice I'm not picking the assembly plane, I'm picking the part plane. Because I want to add a second connection now that's also planar between the bottom of the cut and the bottom of my part. So now I've got two connections. They're both planar. And I'll turn off the datum planes and then the little hand here is going to let me drag this part. Looks like I'm going to have to do some modification. Okay. Let's do that same part now. Let's just do that again. So I'm going to add the shuttle part. going to add a planar connection where it's this plane to that plane and we're going to add another planar connection to the bottom of the cut to the bottom of the shuttle. Turn off the planes. I want to make some modifications here. Looks like uh, we're going to need to slope those faces a little bit more. If I change my smart filter here to features, I can right click and then edit and find out that the slopes are 75 wide and 85 at an angle. So now, if I pick that feature and edit, I can make this point, say, 72 and 85. And um, that ought to do it. But let's, while we're here, let's make this one and a quarter as well. Control G, and that'll update those, fit them right in. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, add then the level. Huh. Got to change that too. Now, we're going to add also as a connection, but this time we're going to add a pin to the first connection where the axis alignment is going to be with this cylindrical face and then the cylindrical face on the shuttle. And then the translational aspect of the pin joint is going to be the bottom face of the lever and the top face of the shuttle. And uh, there's our joint, already fully defined. But I'm going to add an offset translation as well. Let's go ahead and and offset that. 0.13. Perhaps we want to change that from minus to a positive. So it's offsetting it upwards. Now this component has a single pin joint. We're going to add a second joint now. Now if we add a second pin, the translation aspect of the pin joint will be redundant. So I don't want to add a second pin. I want to add a cylinder, which requires an axis alignment, but does not require the translational component. So I'll connect then 
this cylindrical face to this one. That ties them together. Call that OK. Oh, so we've got a few problems here, but it's uh, starting to shape up pretty good. If I grab now the end of our handle, you see it's starting to do, to behave just like we hoped it would. Let's take a look then at um, features. Go back into here and change this instead of five apart. Let's make it three and a half. Control G. Aha! That's starting to look a little better. Grab the hand again. They're still a little far apart, aren't they? Let's go back edit that, change this to say two and a half, and make this maybe uh, seven. Control G. And now let's see if that's making a little bit more sense. Oh yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so for the last aspect of this, we might want to make it so that it, it runs on all by itself. So I'll save this as an assembly, and then through applications, we'll go to mechanism, where I can add a servo motor to a joint. So we'll make a new, new servo motor, and the joint axis, we're going to put it on is here, and then the profile might be a, a velocity of a constant um, angular velocity. So it, if we want it to go, say, uh, 360 degrees in, say, 10 seconds, we'd want 36 degrees in one second. Alright, so we'll call that OK. And then we can go and do a run or an analysis. We'll make a new one. We'll give it a name. Let it go for 10 seconds. That'll be fine. It's already including the motor that we created. Let's run it. And there it is. Go back to the playback. Playback. And we'll just let it go. Now in this case, we could probably turn this up a little bit. How cool is that? Well, I hope a little of this made sense to you. I know I went through this kind of quick in some ways, but uh, that's the cool part about the video. You can uh, turn it off, run it back, start over again. Um, I hope it uh, I hope it made some sense to you. I hope it ha you had some fun along the way, and um, look forward to uh, seeing you on a different episode. Have a great day now. My name is Leo Green, and uh, I look forward to talking to you in the future. So long now.